and we're live everybody welcome into the at flippin hippos youtube channel i'm star the flippin hippo and i will be doing a haul video for you guys today i just realized we might have some sound in the background going on and i think the remote is across the room so we'll see if we can get some help turning that off i usually have the air turned off before i come on i forgot today because it's so hot um our ebay room has like just this little air conditioner and I turn it off during shows because I feel like all you guys are hearing is but let me tell you how hot under the Harry Potter let me tell you how hot it is here today under the papers oh I'm a liar and I have no idea where my remote controller is sorry um it is so hot that our post office room has like now I'm echoing. Our post office is two blocks away. We typically walk there. Um, unless we have like a Monday fat stack, like 30 packages we'll drive. Um, just turn it off up manually. Um, we had six packages go out today and we drove. It's, it's not really that it's that hot. It's humid and muggy and it's one of those days where you go outside and there's so much like wetness and mugginess in the air like you feel like you can't breathe and if you take a shower and you walk outside you feel like you already haven't showered in 10 days um you can see obviously my hair looks different today that's from the humidity um it's just really hot and gross and when we got back from um post office run I was like, I have to sit in front of the air for a while, and um, it, it's hot. I'm talking about the weather because I can. Let's see who's here now. Holly, Noelle, Donatella, welcome in, ladies. We'll wait a couple more minutes for some folks to come in, um, and I'll just kind of give a little speech about what we bought, like I always do at the beginning. Um, I think that the heat affects me, too, because I feel like I'm less focused. Um, I feel like I space out more and I'm having more like what do you call them brain farts like normally when I can sit down and bang out 10 listings in under an hour already photographed stuff mind you um, it may be taking me an hour and 10 minutes an hour and 15 minutes um, I don't know if I'm just tired or the heat hi Sydney welcome in but I'm going to tell you what I don't want to go outside I just don't I want to stay inside. It is too darn hot to be a human being right now. Um, and the skies are now turning gray, and I keep hearing thunder. So we might be getting a storm that might help get rid of some of that humidity. My grandmother used to call it humility. She'd say the humility sigh. She was funny. All right, so last Saturday we went to a quote-unquote community yard sale. And yet again, it was like four houses, and these ones weren't even close together. We had a map. This community yard still looked promising because they had a Facebook event that you could get to from their Craigslist post that I got on the yard sale app. You went to their Facebook event and read about it. It's this annual neighborhood, over 40 houses and families participating, tons of goods for everyone. I went through the photos. I'm like, oh my God, this looks so promising. So we got up, it's a little bit of a drive, it was a little far, but for 40 houses and what they were saying on their Facebook event, um, let me please add that there was no rain in the forecast. It was nice and sunny Sunday, Saturday. There was no rain, there was no inclement weather impending. Um, so we got up extra early and drove a half an hour to this community yard sale. We had the map, you got the map on Facebook Marketplace, and we drove to all the spots on the map where the houses that were supposed to be participating and it may have been more than five but it felt like they were really few and far spaced in between there was nowhere near 40. there was one road that had several that we parked on the road and walked all the way up the road and back down and had three on that road and then so there was probably like six or seven now that i think back it really didn't feel like that many as promised we were kind of disappointed and there was no reason for people to not be coming out there was no bad weather or whatever um, so we really didn't get that much at yard sales, like very, very little. Um, volume wise, we got a lot. I'm going to show you guys some ties. 
we bought like 30 ties from one person um some loveys and some plush but not that much it was overall disappointing so we mapped our way home and we stopped at all of the one-offs that weren't community sales which is you know yard sales that were advertised one family one house we mapped our way back and we stopped at all of those on the way back it just we were home by 11 and usually on yard sale good yard sale days we're home at one or two so that was disappointing um and then we went to just one Goodwill on Sunday and got 45 items there because I have death piles. I have death piles. Plural. I have death piles coming out my ears. I've got four chairs at this point I'm working off of. You guys know I work off of rolly chairs because of my back. I have four chairs stacked full of stuff and I still have an entire floor uh, in the foyer where my friend's stuff is that she had donated to us when she retired her eBay store. We still have several I don't want us in the serial killer room upstairs. So I am trying to be super duper. Y'all see Keith sneak die out there? Say hi Keith. <laughs> um, I'm trying to be super doobie, super doobie, super doobie, super duper cherry picky. Say that five times fast. Super duper cherry picky. Keith does not have the amount of death piles I have. He has one small pile. I wouldn't even call it a death pile. It is a very small pile of stuff he's working through this week. He has his more than his fair share of the I don't want us in the upstairs. But um, so he's he's not being as cherry picky. He's you know doing the whole I got to get volume. I got to pick a lot of stuff. It's all ninety nine cents. I'll get filler. I'll get bread and butter. And I'm trying to be more cherry picky and work through what I have. Of course, every time I go in and say I'm going to be cherry picky, it's the one week that everything that's good bread and butter or super good is like ninety nine cents, and I'm like I can't pass up on it. Not a lot of plush this week. I will warn you guys, the plush lovers, now. Um, not a lot of plush. I got. A couple plush at Goodwill and a couple plush at the yard sales. Most of what we got was clothing. A lot of it is bread and butter and filler that I couldn't pass up on for 99 cents. Even when I'm cherry picking, which I really didn't. Let's all be, let's all be honest. I didn't cherry pick. Um, so that said, let me look through the chat real quick before we jump in and look at the stuff. Uh, I said hello to Sydney. Linda, hi. Welcome in. Northwest Purple Sparkles. Thrifty Christie is here. I see you. Hi. Um, what's the style? Um, that's cool, Noelle. Cool. Um, we've been we've done ties since the beginning. Um, ties was one of the first things Keith delved into. Um, they're great. I mean, it was one of the first things. I remember we went to the Benz once, and he filled up a cart with ties like thousands of them and it didn't cost him but like 50 bucks maybe by weight they're like five or ten cents a piece at the bins um and uh ties were one of the first things he started doing um we've gotten to the point now where we know which ones are worth a dollar two dollars even two fifty five for some donald trump for us to flip um, some you don't want to pay more than 50 cents for, some you don't want to pay more than a quarter for, some you don't want to pay more than 10 cents for. Um, I'd say that he, he's our tie expert in the house. He knows as much about ties as Jamie Pace or Casey, who both of us learned from. Um, but I, I know a lot about ties too. Um, and there are some that are really worth money and there's some that are just bread and butter. I think like in every category, you're going to have your bread and butter and your fillers, even in plush, even in ties. I have plush that I let go for nine and 10 bucks that I got for a quarter. And then I have my expensive plush. Same with jeans. I mean, everything's going to have hit its luxury items. It's upper class bread and butter. It's regular middle ground filler bread and butter. And then it's crap you don't want to buy. Um, but ties was one of his first things and I know he had thousands and thousands and thousands of ties back in 2017 He's worked his way through most of them What's left upstairs and his I don't want to tie piles are like the ones that are um, We probably shouldn't have sourced because 
we were still new and learning or they had damage or something. So we'll lot those up. Eventually, we keep saying this for two years, we're going to lot them up for crafters and DIY and stuff like that. Um, but that's what you can do. That's a good idea, guys. If you have ties that are damaged or that you have had around and want rid of, um, just watch your weight. Make sure they're going to go in a box that's smaller than 12 by 12 by 12 since the new postal change with the dimensional rates. And um, watch your weight. Make sure that, you know, you're not doing free ship on a bunch of ties that you're charging 20 bucks for that weigh 5 pounds. Just be careful with that. Um, so, a secret store. Yeah, I think that here's my opinion on that. And this is my advice. And I know that a lot of the YouTubers will 1,000% agree with me. Um if you are in the social media eye in any kind of way, if you're an influencer on Instagram, if you have a YouTube channel, um, you should have a second eBay store. You absolutely should have a second eBay store for two reasons. One, you can put stuff over there and build your reputation up in case something were to happen to your main store. Um, unfortunately, there are not nice people in the world. There are trolls in the world. There are bad people in the world. And if you are you know, in the eye of the public and you're a social media influencer, I hate to say it, but it could happen that someone becomes so much of a troll or a hater, they do something to destroy you or wreck you or come after your bread and butter. Um, and if you had a second store, then you have something to fall back on. That would be reason number one. And reason number two, and I've said this before, we can't tell you guys everything. We can't give you all our secrets. There are some things that we do flip. And by we, I don't just mean me and Keith. I'm talking about all YouTubers and um, Instagrammers collectively as a we, as social media folk. We have things that we don't share with you. And we have our secrets because there are certain things you can't show folks if you want to continue to be in business with it. You can't give away certain sources or certain items. And you can put those on your secret store. So two reasons. I mean, it's a good idea for people in any type of way on social media to have a second store. I also recommend everybody keeps their Amazon store secret. Um, that's just because of things I've heard, stories I've heard, things I've heard from Jamie. I've heard horror stories from a lot of people on Amazon who let their stores be public. So it's really easy with one report or one complaint on Amazon to destroy somebody. It really is. A stranger could do it to you. So I just recommend if you have an Amazon store, keep that private, 1,000%. We do not show our Amazon store. We do not publicly tell people what our Amazon store is. We show you our public eBay store. Um, absolutely, everything I share with you in the video, in the hauls, everything I tell you guys and teach you guys and show you guys in the bolos and all of that is in that store. And you can go through it anytime you like and see that we really are selling what I'm telling you we're selling. We're listing the things that we're sourcing. You can stalk it to get ideas for your keywords, for your titles. You can stalk it to get an idea for your descriptions and your photos and things like that. But I, there's, you know, there's certain things that we all can't share everything. You know what I mean? Um, well, that was really a big tangent. Um, yeah, so it kind of. They're linked in the way that if we did something stupid enough to get ourselves suspended. So say like we kept going against the Vero or we kept listing items that they told us to take down for copyright and we got ourselves suspended that way, then yes, all eBay's in this house linked to that IP would be suspended. Um, whether they were in my name, Keith's name, my kid's name, or Henry's name. Wouldn't matter. Um, or Hannah's name. But if you started getting a lot of negative feedback from a troll or from a hater from YouTube or something, you could just stop listing on that one and take your items down and go move to your secret one and still be making an income. Um, so as long as you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, it... It, it only counts if you screw up somehow. You know what I mean? Nathan's in the house and I see Nicole. Welcome in, guys. Um, yeah, I mean, and you guys will agree with that. I share about 75% of what we do with you guys. Our brands, our clothing, our items, our sources and stuff like that. Um, but you got to keep something close to the cuff because if we shared everything, then thousands of people would be 
you know, and like a lot of folks sometimes will ask me where I send my kids clothes to. You guys do know it. That's not a secret. We go to the Benz. We buy $100 worth of kids clothes, which is a lot, by the way. A lot. A lot. Kids clothes are like this big and don't weigh anything. We systematically wash, dry them, chuck them over, you know, QA, and we send them away and we make money on them. And people periodically ask me where I send them. And unfortunately, I can't tell you that because I can't have my 4,000 subscribers telling 4,000 people a piece and then everybody's sending it there because then it's going to not be profitable for us. But I can tell you there are places out there and if you do your own research on Google, you can find places local to you or places to send them into. And it's not just kids clothes. There's lots of places for lots of items. Thank you, Donatella. I appreciate you stopping in. I will talk to you later. All right, so I've been already talking for 15 minutes. Let's get into the haul. So here's the thing. I'm not organized this week. Um, am I ever? I, th I feel like every week I'm like, this week I'm not organized. No, we had a lot going on this week. So Keith did get all of, he did manage to get all of the Goodwill, the Goodwill haul, everything we thrifted. He got it washed and dried and it was like 11 or midnight by the time it was done Tuesday night, I think it was. We let it, we always let it sit in the trunk. We don't bring it into the house and then it gets washed and dried. It got finished so late. Um, normally what I do, you guys know that normally I sort through it and I kind of pull stuff I'm not going to show you and then the stuff I want to show you. Um, we just kind of bagged it up and set it aside and I'm just going to show you all of it. I don't, I, it's not in any kind of way order. This is how it came out of the dryer. Stuff's in a bag. I don't know what's what or what's where, but what are you going to do? I didn't have time to sort through it. I did, however, do this. One store, 44 items, a total of $55.48 for a $1.23 average per item. $1.23 average per item. Um, thank you so much, Cherry Picker. I appreciate the sentiment. Um, it's give and go. Give and go? Give and, that's not what I mean. Give and take? Nope. On and off, we'll say that. Like, I can feel one brewing now. I was okay most of today. But it's, it's gotta be the weather. It's always around the thunderstorms. I agree with you 1,000%. And I know Holly says hers flare up around storms, too. So... Green was 99 cents. We leave these on in the washer and dryer, guys, because otherwise I'll forget. Most of the times I can look at something like this and guess. I would have paid 99 cents for that, no more, but. These are just women's plaid Bermuda shorts. These are a good bread and butter filler for 99 cents when you can find them. Any brand, um, I find that the Bermuda shorts and the booty shorts both in plaid any brand, any size does well for me. I don't know if it's just because they're so cute or they're different or women just like to wear these with like a plain tee or tank top. But these plaid and these patchwork quilt ones like this has some floral patches in it. Um, this is Old Navy. This one's a size 8. It was 99 cents. Not Your Daughter's Jeans, 99 cents size 8. This is a brand I will pick up at any size, any style. I start them at $26. Um, I used to start them at $25, but then we had postal increases and everything else, and we do free shipping, so we raised the prices on most of our stuff by a dollar gradually since January, about halfway through the year, so most of it's already been raised. Um, these are dark wash. They're nice. With those shorts, I can't offhand, I believe I start Old Navy plaid shorts like that at like 14 and the Charter Club might be like 13 I'd have to double check. I don't comp them anymore. Those are one of the things I comp off of myself. I just like, what do I have in the store? What did I start those at? And then I just do that. Um, I tell you guys all the time that it's no secret. I don't really comp anymore. And unless it's something absolutely new to me or an oddball one-off, but if it's jeans, shorts, plush, 
Um, most of the time I don't even comp. I know when I pick it up to source it, what I'm going to charge when I get home. Or I just check my own store and go off my own prices. In the SKU line, we put the original date we listed it and the original price we wanted and its location. This is a new to me brand. It's called Sneak Peek. It is a junior's size three. That's two reasons why I got it. It's a sexy boyfriend, which is a good style of jeans. A lot of women like these boyfriend jeans. These are popular, we do well with them. Um, I guess there's three reasons. These are ripped and distressed as well, which do really good, and being so small. And I know I've told you guys this before, but just like the plus size, the really, really super small size, for me at least, is a bolo. Um, the middle sizes are the ones, the average sizes, the average size women, they're finding those in the brick and mortars. The women who are plus size and the women who are really tiny have a harder time finding clothing. So like size four, three, two, one, and then the zero, um, double zero, I do well with us. This is Gloria Vanderbilt, size 16, 99 cents. Gloria Vanderbilt's a brand I will pick up only if it's 99 cents and only if it's size 14 or larger or is some kind of unique pattern or color. These are yeah, I never even heard of this brand. Creme Fresh Lights. But they were 99 cents and you can see that they are the plaid booty shorts. So these would be something I would comp because they're new to me. See, now if I had sorted through this stuff, this would have been put at the bottom of the pile to show you last because it's so exciting. Look at this. I'll have to check out your video, Noelle. After this video, um, our dinner's in the crock pot, but I gotta make noodles on the side. I'm making chicken knot pot pie. I'll put the recipe to the chicken knot pot pie in our Facebook group. If you're not in our Facebook group, the link to join is down below. I do cooking videos sometimes here and there and tonight I'm making the chicken knot pot pie um, so while I'm cooking noodles and waiting for that and cleaning up the kitchen I'll, I'll watch your thunderstorm I love watching thunderstorms so yeah these are miss me jeans duh I pay full price six dollars and ninety nine cents here's the thing usually at our goodwills these miss me jeans are in the display case up front and they're twenty to forty to fifty dollars so somebody who didn't know what they were doing put these on the rack for $6.99. I will start these at 50, maybe 55 if I'm feeling froggy. <laughs> Noelle, I'm gonna bar, well see, you're not as big of a clothing seller as I am. What I did before eBay open, what I'll do before eBay open again this year, I kind of been looking on 99 cent day and buying myself like new jeans to wear. So I have a couple pairs of new jeans, um, but I'll look for some tops or whatever. But what I'll do is like right before we go, I shop in our store. And since everything has 10 day handling time and we're on vacation, um, anything that I like that I want, we pull out of our inventory, we wash it and dry it. Because I, I mean, it's washed and dried before I listed it, but then it sits in the inventory and I'm just weird. I want it washed again. Um, but that's what we did last year, like two days out before we left we were pulling clothes that I was renting, washed them, dried them, wore them and open, brought them home, washed them, dried them again, and then um, put them back into their inventory spot. Yes, I'm, I'm that ghetto. Listen, I live in like the same five t-shirts and jeans all, all year. I don't really have like clothes. I'm a, I'm a recluse who works from home and hashtag fashion dumb. So we got a Steeler shirt for 99 cents. No big deal. It's a men's shirt. I don't, Keith will probably started at like maybe 14. I don't know. Those used to go for more. We've got an extra large Brooks Brothers polo. I think this is green. This was 99 cents and it feels heavy cotton it's nice uh, again I don't know what he starts those at Lacey straight new to me 
they're by Hot Kiss, but these look, um, they're cute. I've done Hot Kiss shorts. But look at that. All these rips and tears and distressing and holes. And they were uh, 99 cents. And they're Junior's 9. But they were just so unique. I had to get them. Uh, this is Glow by Gloria Vanderbilt. So this is only a size 12, it doesn't follow my size 14 up rule, but it's like a brown burnt sienna color, so they're different. And I do well with that glow anyway. They were 99 cents. Um, probably 20 to 22 I think I'll start them at. These are American Eagle. They were 99 cents. They are size 6, but they're unique in the fact that they're like this nice light sea green color and these are stretch skinny these will start around 21 they felt like they'd go first class so this is a wrangler 2xl men's button front i know that keith does well with wrangler button fronts in the larger sizes he paid 99 cents, and I know he won't pick them up unless they're XL or larger, or unique. Like if they have some cut, if they're a pearl snap or some kind of cool graphic or plaid. I'm gonna try to save the yard sale stuff for last and just kind of plop through the clothes quickly. This is a pair of Arizona Jean Company, but they're women's denim green shorts. Since they're denim and they're a bad brand, I'd probably start them around 18. Those I'll probably have to comp. Um, this is a men's Arizona jean shirt. I know this is like a, I think it was like a JCPenney brand. But a lot of their stuff, well, when we find it for 99 cents, we pick it up because we do well with it. It's not going to sell for a lot of money. It's a really good for us, a very good bread and butter filler. We get it for 99 cents and these shirts will sell for like 16, 18. Um, the shorts sell, the, sh the jeans sell. We wouldn't pay more than 99 cents for it, I will tell you that straight up. But it is a good filler for us. Um, Northwest Blue. I think this is one he picked because it was 99 cents has a nice graphic and it's a brand we've never heard of and we like to take risks when it's only going to cost 99 cents. There went my receipt. Um, you guys saw I had three pairs of these a couple weeks ago from several different brands. These ones are Alfred Dunner but the size is good. It is a plus size 20W women's chef pants. Dun, da, da. Always tell you guys, look for them uniforms. They do good. And plus size in anything is awesome. Levi's, again, good bread and butter filler brand for men's button front shirts. This one's a pearl snap. So that one was a no brainer for 99 cents. I don't know what key starts those pearl snaps at in that brand. These are jeans. Duh. They've got to have a brand somewhere. Oh, these are writers. So these are women's um, writers jeans, which I don't normally pick up. I'm trying to find the size to find out why I picked them up. They're size 14. They're tan. Maybe that's why. I typically avoid Riders and Lee and Levi's, honestly, unless they're like new with tags. Um, but I guess since these were size 14, which does count as plus size on Poshmark. Sorry, I just almost knocked my hippos over. Um, I'll probably start around 21. Well, they're plus size, so maybe 23. I don't know. These are Dockers 16. So again, a brand I normally would get. But 99 cents for a larger size and a unique color of jeans. These are 
you can't really tell here, but they're like a um, olive or an army green. And these will probably be started around 2021. I'm going to comp them just to be sure. It's been a while since I sold Dockers. I want to see if they've um, gone back up or if they've really tanked at the bottom because I don't want to overprice too high. These are Levi's 515 jeans. These are actually like capris or I guess capris or pedal pushers, whatever you want to call them. I just sent out a pair of full length 515s today that sold for 20, 21. So these will go first class. They're capris, so I might list these at like 18. Again, I'll double check that. I like the conversation going on. I'm reading it, guys. I've, I have been living in jeans since I was old enough to old enough to voice myself. I wouldn't wear clothes when I was a baby. My parents told me I would always take them off and wear around in a diaper. It's because you always put me in dresses and skirts, and I didn't want them. I wanted jeans, and I didn't want Barbies. I wanted to play in the mud. I wanted to watch He-Man. I wanted to be a tomboy. Again, these are only a 12 Vanderbilt, so they don't follow my size 14 and up roll, but they're cords. They're corduroys and they're tan. I love corduroys of any brand. Um, killing my hippos here. And there they go. <laughs> Sorry, guys. We'll just leave one because I'm just going to make it worse. Um, those I'll probably start around 21. Here is the classic denim, just my size, JMS plus size jeans. This is a good brand for plus size. It will not get you super duper big prices or anything, um, but it has a following. There are women who wear the just my size. They know the fit, they know the feel, they like them. This is the only jeans they'll wear and they will go online to look for them. These are a plus size 18W. Paid 99 cents. I'll probably, I want to say the last time I listed a pair of JMS, I did start at like 21. That's just kind of like my starting point for most of our bread and butter on brands and mall brands. We do free ship. So 21 um, is like American Eagle, Gap, Old Navy, just my size, Gloria Vanderbilt. I don't like to go much below that um, unless it's like really tiny, small size in first class and a brand I'm like, oh, well, I shouldn't have got that. And honestly, because of the volume that we deal in, I don't spend, I don't comp anymore really at all. But when I do, I don't spend a lot of time comping. And I just have a general price point I start general brands at. So... You know, if it's American Eagle, it's going to start at 21. I don't care if it's a boot cut, a flare, boyfriend, girlfriend, skinny jeans. Um, the only time I change the price based on looks is if it's more unique or different or plus size. So I'll typically add two to three bucks for plus size off of my, what I know up here that I'm going to start it at. Or two or three bucks if it's really unique, you know, if it's striped or leopard print. Um... But I have a starting point for all, you know, all American Eagle Star 21. I don't really worry about the style. Unless you need to worry about the style. There are some brands that you need to worry about the style. Like Seven for All Mankind. Well, for Dojo jeans, they're going to be a lot more. With Miss Me jeans, they have the style number. I actually do look those up. Um, I do comp Miss Me jeans each and every time. I said I'd start those at 50 or 55. That's pretty much where I start Miss Me Jeans at. But I do look up the style just to be sure because I do find some that sell for 60 or 65. And then you find some that a lot of people are doing for 30 and 35. And then I know maybe I should start at 45. Um, but yeah, there's certain brands you do need to look up the style. Um, Miss Me Silver, it matters. They, silver Jeans have the name. You need to look up the name. But your run-of-the-mill basic bread of the butter. Bread of the butter? Bread and butter, run-of-the-mill mall brands, don't worry about it too much. 
I think a lot of people spend so much time comping and overthinking pricing when you really don't need to. All right, these are Levi Strauss, again, against my own rules, but they're capris and it's summertime, so I got them for 99 cents. Sorry, hippos. These are American Eagle. They were 99 cents. They're a size 12, but again, capris, short, and if you look at the front, the pockets are a little different and cute. These are... South Pole. Better make sure they're authentic. Um, these are women's South Pole. You can tell they're a super small size. Which I told you all just a couple minutes ago. I do really good with these super small sizes. And this has got bling on the butt. These are Eddie Bauer. Again, not a very good brand. But look at how cute these purple and pink you can't really tell it's really gray out now it's starting to rain um, they're a really nice pink and purple plaid I will have to check the comps on Eddie Bauer shorts I don't think I've sold any of those recently and can't remember off the top of my head this is just a uniform top 99 cents These are another pair of riders for 14 that were also tan, like the other ones I showed you. They were 99 cents, obviously. I got a plus size pair of Gap 33. They're size 33 and they're high rise skinny and they're really nice dark wash. So these are ones that I would probably start around 24, 25 more because of their size and their look. This bag wants to fall. These are Ellen Tracy. So I've never heard of Ellen Tracy before. But I thought I'd try it for 99 cents because they're a size 18 and they're a really neat brown finish. So big size, different color, worth 99 cents. Capris aren't capris on me, so I don't wear capris just because they look like floodwater hobbit pants. I'm five foot tall, so um, capris look really weird on me. I don't even know what this is. Morrissey? I picked them up because of the way they look. Everything looks really bad right now in this lighting. These are black, believe it or not. And they're like Bermuda length. Uh, thanks, Holly. This is Arnold Palmer, extra large. I know Keith does pick up the Arnold Palmer, Arnold Palmer polos. Arnold Palmer polos. When he finds them, this one has the Pittsburgh Penguins on it, alumni. And it was 99 cents. I'm hoping that my internet holds out for the next 20 minutes so I can finish this video, but if I suddenly disappear and you guys lose me, it's because it really is starting to storm. This is a Big Rock Canyon authentic rugged wear for 99 cents. I think I've seen Keith do this one before, too. These are the Limited. But they're super cute and they were 99 cents. They're purple. And they have um they're cotton spandex blend, but if you look, it's woven differently. Yeah, this this lighting is bad because that's that's not what they look like to me. They match the writing on my thing up there. I'll have to comp those. Willie Smith. 
size four, but these are like the dress, the dress slack shorts for fancy fake. They got the dress slack closure and the really cool print. Look at that. So I'll try that for 99 cents. I haven't sold anything really Smith in forever. I smelled, a, I smelled, I smelled. I sold a Willie Smith shirt and a skirt long ago and far away, but I didn't know what I was doing. But we'll see what the shorts do. They're cute. And then we have Gloria Vanderbilt's that follow the rule. These are size 16. They're plain blue jeans, but they're above a size 14, so I would pay 99 cents for those. My poor hippos. Sorry, guys. All right, that's the close. And if, if, I, if you guys feel like I'm going too fast, I'm sorry. I'm, like, trying to get through all of this before um, I feel like that we might lose our honor. So these are from the Goodwill. This is a squarety cat. Because he's a cat and he's a square. He's not squared to dance. <laughs> oh my god, this thing is cute. And he's got writing. I'll just disclose that. 50 cents for the squarety cat. In the tutu who's not squared to dance. Arnold Palmer was a golfer. I believe he invented the half iced tea, half lemonade drink. What I found, I found a popple. <laughs> Alright, my other 80s and 90s friends that grew up. 80s and 90s babies. Y'all remember the popples? And then they came out of their ball. Yay. And he talks. <laughs> I think he's French. Is he French? Is he speaking in French? Are you speaking in French? Oui, oui. Uh, Parlez-vous Francois. He might be French. <laughs> I think this man's talking in French. Oh my gosh. I'll have to put fresh batteries in him so he talks a little bit louder. Um, this is Sunny. But anyway, when I was little, I loved the popples. I had so many popples. Popples. I'm like such a kid when it comes to my plush. Y'all know who this is, right? This is a TY or T A or TIE, however y'all say it. Um doesn't even have her name on it. Usually Ty has the name of the people. This one just says Ty. Um, so the popple and the cat were 50 cents each. Um, she's still got that on her from being in the normal part of the store. She was in the basket. So they let me have her for 50 cents. This is Dora. Dora annoyed the crap out of me when my sons were small. I actually would not let them watch her because the whole louder, louder, louder! It's just like... Uh, speaking of international, we just sold a, sent a Grover through a global shipping program. We sent a Grover to Francois today. Peeps! just a little plush peeps 50 cents and you guys know I love my wild republic plush this one is really unique though it is a fox who is pink and she has a bow it is a pink fox. She looks purple in this light, but she's pink. She's like a bright pink. 
and she's super cute and she was 50 cents um this is disney frozen elsa <laughs> or anna i forget which one's blonde and which one has brown hair i think i have the other one i gotta go uh, look through my plush i haven't listed yet from our other hauls i save them up in a big box i've told you guys that and then i do photograph a bunch at a time I think the other one I had was brown haired. So I may sell them together if, I, if I'm if i gonna go look. But if I do end up having, she was 50 cents. If I do end up having both sisters, then I'm gonna sell them in a lot. Absolutely, because Frozen 2 is coming out. Um, Yeah, I couldn't stand Dora. She was just, nah, nah, nah. now I did enjoy Blue's Clues and I would sit with the boys and, and do the whole Blue's Clues with them. Nathan says, when I was in the Navy, I was on the aircraft carrier, U.S. Eisenhower, Arnold Palmer. I swear Arnold Palmer was a golfer, though, and that, that drink you get that's half iced tea and half lemonade is Arnold Palmer. Hmm. Elsa's the blonde, I thought so. But that's still cool that you got to um, see President Carter on the ship. That's awesome. So the price tag is falling off, but it's green. So this was 99 cents. It is just Croft and Barrow handbag, but it's 99 cents, first of all. It doesn't even feel like it weighs a pound. And it's just cute. It's a cute, it's a cute shoulder bag. It's cute. I would rather sell something that's super cute like this with a nice print that I pick up for 99 cents that I flip for 20 or 25 than deal with non-authentic claims and fake claims on the higher end ones that's just me i like to sell like the bags with the disney bags and stuff like that too and i love doing vera bradley but this was 99 cents which is why it was picked up it's an extra large covington it's just from sears but it's new with tags and it's got its um collar stay still in so that's a nice shot and then I got these. They're not Dojo, which is disappointing, but they're still seven for all mankind new tags. I'm trying to show it to you, and this light is just total awful. There you go, you can see it there. You can see it there. So, uh, the MSRP on these is $132. And since I'm absolutely crazy, um, I don't, I don't comp stuff that's new with tags. I just knock like 30 to 40% off the MSRP. I put the MSRP in the title and again in the description. Um, and I knock 30 to 40% off. 30 if it's a really good brand or something that's super unique. If I feel like there's not going to be very many of them on or it's a high sought after. 40% um, if it's not. And I don't even comp. I don't even look. I don't want to know. Because I've seen new with tags. Um, like uh, 7 for All Mankind go for 70 or 80. And I've seen turds let them go for 15. So I just go with my own my own system I have. Um, I'm going to tell you this is one of the things that I do that I would not recommend you all do. Because it is a little crazy. Um, Keith says it's crazy. Casey says it's crazy. But then when I sell these items on the regular for these prices I have to rub it in their face like my system works but I don't know that it would work for you so this is not something I recommend even if it's new with tags even if it has an MSRP on it y'all should still be comping it absolutely because you never know the market goes up the market goes down people race to the bottom but that's just what I do it works for me I'm crazy I like to price high anyway um, so those I'll probably start at 70. Oh, and they were 99 cents. So, um, hello. Awesome. All right. From a yard sale. Scooby-Doo. Was a quarter. 
and eat more chicken Chick-fil-A cow, 25 cents. Funny side story, at one point, two years ago maybe, we haven't been to the Benz in a long time, but one of our very first trips to the Benz, we found about 12 of these. Some were standing on all four, some were sitting like this. All these different cows with all these different sayings on their billboard. We did really, really well with them, so we knew that these Chick-fil-A's were a bolo. They're long tail, they're not gonna go overnight, but they do sell and they sell for good money. And then a couple months later, we found a giant one. And he sold fast. He was fast. I got a Raggedy Ann. She was a quarter. Um, this one lady had a, a playpen out in her yard with a bunch of plush in it. And it said 50 cents on the sign that was taped to it. But then she had a line through 50 cents and it said 25 cents, all toys. So I'm like, yeah, I'll take your Scooby-Doo and your Raggedy Ann. The cow came from another place. The cow came from where we got this for a dollar. If you guys don't know, these handheld games are bolos. Even out of the package and used. If you find them for a buck or two, get them. If you find them for five in the package never open, that is your bolo of the week. This is our find of the week. This is the best thing we got. Five bucks. No brainer. These things sell for 40, 50 bucks. Um... I mean, there's some that sell for only 20 and of course, if you have one out of the package, it's going to be less. But these handheld games, I know that Casey, the Rockstar Flipper, talks about these and shows them all the time also. These little handheld games are a bolo. Um, we got a Canon digital camera. I'm like Vanna White. You see my camera? Isn't she gorgeous? Paid five bucks for it. It needs a battery, so we are debating right now. We can get $20 for parts or repair not tested. We could spend $9 on a battery. If it works, raise the price to like 50, but if it doesn't work, we're out $9 on that battery. We could sell this for 20 and the battery used, but we couldn't get the nine for it because we would have opened it to test this. So we're kind of deciding what we're gonna do with this. Um, and its battery is unique. So if it had a battery that was compatible with other stuff, it would be a no-brainer. Spend the $9 on the battery, test it. If it works, sell it without the battery working for 50 and keep the battery, and then you could use it again to test other items that you find. But that battery is very unique and specific to this camera, and we don't know that we're ever going to find another one of these cameras. So that's our conundrum. All right, I've got a couple of these. These are becoming my new favorite thing to find in source. And they are everywhere. Here's the thing I said to Keith. Are these just all of a sudden everywhere because, like, coincidentally, you know, when you start talking about something, you start seeing it everywhere? Or have these always been everywhere and I just never looked at them or saw them because I didn't know to? Um, they're always on baby, they're always with baby stuff. They're on tables with diapers. They're on, and, you know, baby, whatever, baby paraphernalia. And at the Goodwill, they're in with baby stuff. So chances are, I just, now I know about them, I go to the baby stuff to look for them, and that's why I'm finding but, um, so many of these. But those of you that watch a lot of my haul videos know that I've been finding a lot of these lately. Like, a lot, a lot. It's ridiculous. This one's new. Cost a dollar. Dream big, little one. And it is... Baby starters, and it's a little sock monkey. Love me. Oh my god, he's cute. I have an Eric Carlisle. If um, you guys remember the Eric Carlisle caterpillar book, The Hungry, Hungry Caterpillar. So I got that one for a dollar. Uh, yeah, same with Noelle and Holly. Even though I am crazy and I like the price high, we do do best offer on all of our items. We also offer free shipping if it's first class. And, I mean, not really free. It's built into the price, but they think it's free and it helps it sell. And then we do free returns on first class, or, yeah, first class as well. So I have a lot of best practices I build into my listings. Really good titles, great keywords, good photographs. Um... And then the best offer, free shipping and free returns in most instances. 
that I feel like that's probably why it sells at that higher point. Um, and I'm always open to offers, or I wouldn't have the best offer on. Um, but yeah. And this one was also a dollar. He's Cole's Cares. But I just listed to Cole's Cares, I believe, this morning. I listed so many, I can't remember. But these used ones that I... This is an owl. Look how cute he is! Um... These used ones are listing for 20 to 36 depending on the brand. And I put up a, a... No, I did not. It's in my drafts. There's a big one. I want to weigh it and check its dimensions before I go making costly shipping mistakes. But I don't know if you guys remember the big giant one I saw. I had. There was a whole blanket with the elephant head and new with its hanger. That is going up for $56. Da -da. Alright, that's... I keep hearing something rattle around. Oh. So, this is probably going to end up being absolutely nothing. But it's worth it for a quarter. So, we bought this. I don't know if that is like... We're going to have to do some research. You see the signature on the bottom. I'm not sure if that's like the original Looney Tunes frog. Doing something with that mouse because I not, is that original Mickey Mouse? I don't know because why would Mickey Mouse be with the Looney Tunes frog? We really don't know what this is, but um, it cost a quarter and it's worth a shot. And if it turns out that it's not worth money and it's an absolutely nothing, I know a certain somebody, <clears throat> Holly, who loves the Looney Tunes frog and he looks close enough to the Looney Tunes frog that. Uh, she may be receiving this as a gift that she could put on the shelf with her Looney Tunes frog. So once I research this, this may become yours, Holly. Um, I have that cabbage. <laughs> That's funny, Dennis. Um, Brownie Girl Scout plush. I've never seen one of those in the wild. Ever, ever, ever. Um, because free shipping and free returns aren't really free. That's how you do it. So if everybody else is selling something twelve, eight dollars shipping, you sell it at twenty or twenty-one free shipping, and you're still charging shipping. And it's the same with returns. Like we've been raising all of the prices on all of our items this year by a dollar to cover the U.S. postal increase as well as free returns. And we only, only do that on first class. Anything, including jeans that go on the padded flat anything that weighs over a pound we do not have free returns on unless in a very rare occasion there are some jeans that have been around a long time that I've drastically dropped the price on and now I'm charging eight dollars shipping on it and offering free returns to kind of like reverse the psychology oh now I'm getting free returns even though I'm paying shipping to try to move some of the old jeans out but um that's how we do it we put free returns on all first class items nothing heavier and most of the time when stuff is returned to us via first class, um, you can opt to refund them less than the whole amount if it's different in any way. If they've worn it, if it's different, if it comes back to you different, because you had free returns on it, eBay will back the seller in this very rare hell froze over instance. And you can say, this came back without its tags attached, this came back in a different condition than we sent it out in and refund them half up to half up to half it's at your discretion and ebay will back you up on that 100 percent and they cannot leave you negative feedback if you have free returns on there and ebay will back you up on that 100 percent and it is absolutely worth it worth it for first class items yes i know that holly loves her old old cartoons um that's Mortimer Mouse. That's Disney. So who's the frog? I'm, I'm going to have to look it up just to make sure. I don't. I mean, if it's worth a million bucks, as much as I love Holly, as much as she's my really good friend and work wife, um, if that ends up being worth a lot of money, I'm going to sell it. But if it's not, I'm going to send it to her. Um, oh, how do you do free returns in the sense how do you actually like physically do them? When you're on the back end listing under returns, you can just push the drop down and you get your option of buyer or free. 
Um, I thought you were asking, like, how can we do it? Because a lot of people ask us, how can you do that? Aren't you losing money? No, not at all. In fact, our returns since we've turned them on haven't changed. We're, like, at 1% returns, and we do majority use clothing, so that's a really good return rate, period, um, especially on used clothing. And we don't really get knocking on some wood there. Um, cool. I'm going to have to look this up. Um, yeah, I priced my items really high though. Like that was just an example. So let's say I have this tie and everyone's selling it for $15 plus five shipping. That makes it a $20 tie. So I'm listing it for 25 free shipping. And in actuality, it's being listed at 32 or $31.25. We would list this at $31.25. Our 20% off sale would hit, knocking it down to 25, and it would still be $5 above everyone else with free returns, free shipping, and best offer. Um, and then if it was to go on Poshmark, it would go over there for like 28. Um, yeah, that's awesome, Nicole. I just never seen them. Like I look at every single plush everywhere I go and I look at their tags. And if I had ever seen anything that was Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, Brownies on principle alone without even comping it or looking it up, it would have come home with me. All right, guys, I've been on for an hour and I got one more thing I want to show you real quick. I'm not going to show you everything. I just wanted to show you some of it and kind of give you an example of how you can barter when you... Um, go to a yard sale. So they had these ties in this, in two boxes, I'm sorry. And they had them rolled up real nice and tight. And they were in two boxes. And you couldn't, oops, I'm trying to show you what they look like when they're rolled up. And I'm just not having a dime of it. Um, they do the return label, the buyer. So if you have free returns on, and they want to return it for buyer's remorse or doesn't fit. They open the return for buyer's remorse or doesn't fit. It's automatically approved because you had free returns on it. And they get the label just like they would with a buyer paid return or an item that was described return. The buyer does it all. They open the case and they do their own label and they print it out and mail it back to you. All right. So they had two, like, they were more like lids. They were these really shallow boxes like this on a table front and back, not side by side, front and back, real shallow boxes, shoved full, shoved full of all these ties. And they were all in the boxes just like this. And the sign said a dollar a piece. Now, if ties are gonna be a dollar a piece, they're gonna have to be something super duper special. They're gonna have to be Donald Trump or Hermes. Um, I'm trying to think of, there's not many really that we would, maybe Ralph, um, not Ralph, maybe Rush Limbaugh maybe Jay Garcia, but that, maybe not. They'd have to be something super, super amazeballs for us to pay a dollar. But they had them packed in these little boxes so tightly and nicely rolled. I went over and I took one and I kind of went like this to kind of try to see the, and I, I saw the label. Then I realized I just screwed up her whole display. And then I was like, oh my God, I cannot sit here and unravel 30 ties. Well, I know there's 31 now, but it looked like a lot. I'm like, I can't sit here and unravel and refold all of her ties. One, that's kind of weird. Two, I don't have time for that. There's other yard sales to look at. And three, her and her friend were just kind of like staring at us. So I did my touch. And if you guys don't know about my touch, um, I'll make that video pop up above. When the live show goes um, onto my channel for replay, I'll put the link in the description box and I'll have it pop up down below for you guys. But I did an entire video on why you should be touching everything and learning how things feel. I can go down a rack of ties and pull the Donald Trump out without looking. You can blindfold me and I can do it by feel. So I ran my hand down all the ties and I couldn't feel anything that was worth a dollar. There were no Donald Trumps. Um, so we kind of walked away and kind of talked about it they like i said they there was like nobody else in the yard so they were staring at us it was very awkward so keith and i kind of walked away a little and we discussed it 
So I walked back, and I walked back fast with my head held high, big strides. Like, I was excited, but I had a purpose, and I knew what I was going to do. And they were still looking at us, and I said, Hi, if I wanted to buy all of your ties, could I have them for 50 cents a piece? And she's like, You want to buy them all? And I said, every single one of them on the table, but I don't want to pay a dollar, I want to pay 50 cents. And she says, if you buy all of them, I'll give you 50 cents a piece. And so we counted them, and there were 31, including a bow tie, um, which probably is not a good thing to source, but if you like Doctor Who, you'll get the joke about the, about the bow tie. Um, so there were 31, and she said, well, I'll just give them to you for 15. So basically one was free, which will count the bow tie is the free one so it's not such a great flip and we um took them and they're little boxes and she put each box in a bag for us and we brought them home and we went through them and nothing too exciting nothing too great i could have told you that by the feel t the, the touch test the feeling um but these are good bread and butter these are good filler and for 50 cents a piece if we were to look through each of these ties individually look at their brands and look at their really super cool prints that some of them have look at that one this is probably my favorite we would have legitimately paid 50 cents up to 50 cents for these would it have been better to find them at the bins and pay by pound yeah would have been better to get them for a quarter a piece yeah but i was already asking this lady for a 50 percent discount just because i was buying her stock um and i would legitimately go through a rack and pick this out and pay 50 cents for it so every tie we got home was a good choice all of these are things that you would definitely pay 50 cents for based on their brands and the way they look some are very unique not as great of brands but you know super unique looking but then there's some good brands in there there's some countess marina i think and there's an oscar de la renta there's italian silk these are all ties that'll flip from 12 to 16 maybe 18 at the high end on some of them um but if you already do sell ties you already do know this and if you don't you need to know this ties are a long-term relationship so if you're going to sell ties you need to be ready to commit yourself to these ties for a long-term relationship they are very long tail the majority of ties are going to sell between 12 and 20 dollars that's why you want to pay 50 cents or less. And they sit around for a very long time. But they don't take up a lot of room. They're super light to ship. They're super easy to photograph and even easier to list if you have a template set up. So if you're going to get into ties, the first one you do, make sure you set a template up and then you can use your template to list moving forward and then just sell similar or keep reusing your template. They are super fast. They're the fastest thing I think to list and photograph, even though you're rolling each tie, it's still faster than anything else I think to photograph, easy. Easy to list, easy to store, they don't take up any kind of room and they are so lightweight to ship. So those are the pros and cons. If you wanna sell ties, you've gotta realize these are gonna be long tail, longer than plush, longer than clothes, longer than your last relationship. They just take forever. But you can fit like 500 of them in one of those bins, so it doesn't really matter. And they weigh like two to three ounces for the most part. Your Donald Trumps, you're probably going to want to put in a box. Ours, are, we roll wrap in tissue paper and put in a bag, or we put in a bag and then tissue paper and a poly. Um, but the more expensive, nicer ones, you're going to want to invest in like the five by five by five boxes, and it's going to weigh like five or six ounces to ship. But, um, I, I don't know. I think they're a really good investment, and that's what they are. They're an investment. They're going to take you forever, ever to sell. But we did get 30 more for our collection. Um, the reason they're in two bags, in case you wondered, this bag has been photographed and listed already by Keith, and about half of them have already been cross-posted to Poshmark by me. And then the other bag is the bag that we're still working on. Um, around other stuff but I just wanted to do a real quick talk on ties there for you guys I know that a lot of resellers including um, uh, well Jamie Pace has always done ties Casey's really moving heavily into ties we've always done ties but we're starting to pick up more um, and I think ties are a lot like plush and that they're 
they're more unique. We can, all of us, all 42 of you and me, we could all go to a different Goodwill in 42 different states tomorrow and we could all find the same pair of jeans, the same brands. We could all find the same handbags and purses and men's button front shirts. But we will all find different ties and different plush. Brand, characters, looks, all of that. Ties are as unique as plush, I think. And when we all go out sourcing, we're not going to oversaturate the market. I mean, ties are oversaturated, but I think that you find different brands and different prints away from other people the same way you do with plush. <clears throat> Frat boy fashion sells. Well, as the 11th doctor on Doctor Who says, bow ties are cool. Hi, Sandra. Welcome in. Unfortunately, I am at the end here, but you can watch the replay later. Um, Sydney says she bought a bag of 40 ties for $10 because she saw one that was a Jay Garcia. Absolutely. All right, guys. I'm over an hour, and I don't want to keep you any longer. So those of you that joined me today, thank you so, so much for spending the last... Well, a little over an hour with me uh, looking at our goodies, all of our clothes, our plush, our ties, and our odds and ends that we find at yard sales. Hopefully this weekend will be more profitable, profitable for us at yard sales. Hopefully we'll find more exciting items and be able to source less clothing from the Goodwill. And we still got tons of piles to work through here. But thank you again so, so much for hanging out with me today. Hit that like button before you leave. If you would, it does help the channel. If you haven't already and you'd like to, please subscribe to our channel and help us feed a hungry hippo. Join our Facebook group. The link to join is in the description box. We are on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter as at Flippin' Hippos across all social media. Until next time, you guys, have a good night. Go be productive and go make lots of money. Mwah. Bye.